All right, hello and welcome to another video in the Learning High Field series. So this time we'll be taking a look at the mask by object node. Um, this one should have been included in the other masking videos, but sadly enough, I forgot to include it. So kind of a bonus video here. So um, in all basics, what this node does is it takes an, a height field in one input and an object in the other. So in this case, I added a tube, scaled it up by a lot, and put it in the second input. And what you get is a the shape of that tube on top of this height field. So we can do the same with another shape. So let's say a box. Again, we're going to have to scale this up by a lot because height fields are quite big uh, by default. But as you can see, we now have the box here. So if I activate the um, template flag here, you can see that it is uh, projected onto the height field and just the uh, mask of it. So this can be very useful in a lot of scenarios when you want to proceduralize your height field systems. So um, first of all, we're going to have a look at the method option. So in here, there's three different ones. Project we being the most basic one. Um, and basically what these methods are, are different types of geometry you can input. So in here, instead of using a uh, proje the project method, I used the VDB method. So I set it to SDF volume. Now, what this is, I won't go into too much, but for all intents and purposes, it's geometry turned into some sort of three-dimensional pixels. That's basically what a VDB is. So you can use that to put it in here, and it'll select that region. A fog volume is uh, similar to a VDB because it will kind of do the same. Uh, only a VDB will only do the outside, whilst a vo fog volume will fill the whole thing up. So it gets the same result, only as you can see, the edges are a bit blurrier, as opposed to this, which has very harsh pixelated edges. Uh, the reason it's so pixelated is, of course, because the resolution on my height field isn't very high. If I were to, for instance, up this, you get a lot better look, but yeah, also worse performance. So another option that might be useful is the invert mask, which is right below the method option. And what this does is just like it says, it inverts the mask. So here I took the same setup as the first one. So let's switch this back to the tube. As you can see, it's exactly the same. But when I turn on this invert mask option, it just inverts it. So this could save you from placing down another node to do this and can be in general very useful. So then you have this maximum distance thing. You might be wondering, what is that? Well, it's to prevent this. So what you're seeing here or what you're not seeing here is a mask. And the reason of that is that I put my object uh, 1,010 meters up. So if I lower this to 1,000, the object is there. So this is basically a limit Houdini puts on the ray it sends from this geometry. So what you should picture is that um, from this geometry, thousands of rays are being sent up to check to see if an object is present. And if it's too high, it won't register. So it's basically an optimization thing. So if I increase this distance to 5, because the object is um, a bit lower than the 10, so if I up this to, let's say, 1,010, you can see that it does indeed capture the object again. So if you want to make a really optimized system, you can, I would say, keep this value low. So keep it at 10 and be sure to keep your geometry uh, close to it as well. So let's say we keep this at 5. So yeah, then we get to um, a different value. So yeah, that's basically the value slider here. And what that does is, again, it's it says it right there in the name. Um, when you change the slider, you can change the value that the um, the mask node outputs. So this can be useful for if you want to apply a certain noise pass over your over your geometry, but you don't want it to fully affect it. So you can just slightly blur it, uh, or you can multiply this mask with another one, and you want to lessen that effect, and you can just kind of blur it out. Um, which gets us to the blur method. So blur method, basically, it's just like the um, blur node or the height field blur node. 
uh, does all these options and a radius slider. So the blur is just a regular Gaussian blur that you also find in Photoshop or many other software. The box blur is slightly different. It just uses a different method of blurring it. Uh, the expand will, like mentioned before in the masking videos, just expand it and the shrink, which will shrink it. So kind of a short one, but I just wanted to be sure that this note was included. So um, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another one.